many wives do you want? None. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Brian Brian no, no Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. I am Jen, and this is Fundy Fridays. And here on my channel, I talk about different aspects of Christian fundamentalism, American conservative politics, pop culture, gay stuff, and a lot of shows that are on TLC, coincidentally enough. So uh, that's what we're doing today. And I just want to say I'm happy to be back. And thank you so much to everybody who wished me well with my wisdom tooth removal. It went pretty well, and the the dentist and assistant were very, very nice and they helped me through my anxiety and it was a relatively stress-free process. And now I don't have these um, annoying teeth in my face that hurt all the time. So that is nice. We have YouTube premium membership set up now. So this would be for the people who don't like Patreon or they want to give more than the $3 tier. That's the only tier available on Patreon. And so you find that on the channel page. There's a little button that says join. There are four levels um, and they are notice me reverend, which is just the dollar a month. Um, and that is just, I will notice you. I will uh, shout you out and, um, uh, reply to your comment when we're live or having a premiere. Sexually Broken Loser, which is basically the equivalent of the Patreon tier and you get access to the Discord and exclusive videos. Then the next tier is God's Cutest Soldier, which, which is $10 and you get all the same thing. Like all these tiers, you get the exact same thing except the first one. And I just wanted to tell you that you don't get anything special or extra for the higher tiers. I just wanted to add them because people really were like asking to give me more money. Who am I to turn down tithing money, right? The next one up is called total depravity because you got to be totally depraved to want to give me $20 a month. Oh yeah. And there's a couple of emojis. Like there's special emojis in the chat. I do have um, an abortion fundraiser going on right now. We have the Dunking Darling shirts, which are making fun of Greg Locke. They have outdated information on them. The back says, if Roe versus Wade is overturned, uh, you can tell when I made these shirts. Um, unfortunately, it has been overturned. So that just means that the donations are more important than ever. I recently made Hot Toddy, which is making fun of Hot Aiken, who is a, was a horrible politician. I hate this man. And that is the most horrible thing I've ever heard. So he is roasting in hell on this t-shirt and the money from that t-shirt sale goes to the National Network of Abortion Funds. Um, and we're also, uh, drum roll, we are working on getting stickers and pins into the bonfire store. So I'm very excited about that. So um, let's see, YouTube premium, fundraisers, merch, um, social media. Yeah. Follow me on Instagram. Um, I was on a bunch of podcasts this month and that's just a good hub to find those. Oh, on the next thing I got to tell you, I do have a bunch of clips from the latest season of sister wives in this video. However, to get them past the copyright police and make sure that this video is not blocked worldwide, I had to speed up the footage to 120 times and they sound like chipmunks. Yes, it is a little distracting. I wish that I didn't have to do this, uh, but I do, otherwise the video would be blocked. Try to keep that in mind. One last thing before we truly begin today. I have to pay my taxes. So today's video is sponsored by Casetify. Once again, Jen and I would like to take a moment and thank the sponsor for today's video, Casetify. You all can go to casetify.com slash Fundy Fridays right now and save 15% off of your next order. Now, Jen can't be with you today because she's editing the video you're actually watching right now. So I'm here to talk to you about Casetify. Fundy Fridays is proud to be a long-term partner of the world's top brand for mobile protection and cutting-edge accessories. And now we're here to show all of you their newest and see-throughest case ever. The Casetify Clear Case. Now you can get all of that top quality mobile protection that Casetify is known for in the sleekest and most comfortable form factor of any mobile case out there today. It's perfect for folks like Jen who need to make sure they protect their phone at all costs while also showing off all of the stickers they get from their therapist for learning new coping skills. 
These clear cases are all optimized to prevent yellowing, which is a common problem in cheaper and lower quality competitors. Casetify's proprietary UV Defender technology also ensures that your case won't develop any blurriness for as long as you own your phone. They even still let you customize your clear case just like all of their others with the same prints, graphics, and artistic wonder we've all come to expect from Casetify. And all of this aesthetic advancement is delivered with Casetify's signature brand of rock-solid mobile defense. Their new clear dotted bumpers offer up to 6.6 .6 feet of drop protection and are tested to the same military-grade specifications as all other Casetify cases. Oh, and did I mention that these cases are also fully MagSafe compatible? So all of you iPhone users can rest assured that your case will stay protected even when you're using all those convenient MagSafe mounts and chargers. So once again, we'd like to take a moment and thank today's sponsor, Casetify, and to remind you that you can go to casetify.com slash fundyfridays right now to save 15% off of your next order. And now, back to the Browns. It has been less than a year since I made my last Sister Wives video, and so much has happened. If you've been on social media at all, you've probably seen discussions or memes about this show because it is fucking crazy. I am an OG Sister Wives fan. I have their book, um, and this is my third episode that I have made about them. Since nine months ago, when I made the last Sister Wives video, all of the original set of Cody's wives have left him. That's right. Cody now officially has the same number of divorces as another famous bad dancer, Ross Geller. Hey, hey, what do you guys think about this? Ross, the divorce force. Sorry for the friends joke. I've seen my analytics and I'm painfully aware of how much of my audience is comprised of millennials. So this season, we've seen not just the spiritual polygamous divorces, but... Also since then, several of the adult brown children are going no holds barred on social media and telling all of the family's interpersonal relationship drama. So much has happened in the last nine months. Cody has taken the red pill. Janelle revealed that she loves Ramstein. And Christine has a new boyfriend. So we have got to talk about this. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about and you're new here, like how is the rent on that rock that you've been living under? I'm just kidding. We have fun here at Fundy Fridays Enterprises. So let me see if I can break this down. Um, Cody Brown is a polygamist originally from Wyoming. He was raised mainstream LDS and then his dad joined the AUB or the Apostolic United Brethren when Cody was a young man. The Apostolic United Brethren is a break off or splinter cell technically of polygamist fundamentalist Mormons, which is not to be confused with Warren Jeff's group, which is called the FLDS. The AUB is also sometimes referred to as the All Red Group, named after two of its presidents who had the last name all right. That's another reason why Christine has been referred to as AUB royalty. Her maiden name was Allred. Gosh, the Fundy Friday cinematic universe sure is expansive and gaping. Although not as prolific and well-known as the FLDS, there has been some sexual abuse problems in the AUB. I myself just recently found out about that this year, otherwise I would have mentioned it in the last two videos. And I'm not insinuating or saying that Cody's family has anything to do with that stuff, point blank. I just wanted to give you the context of where they came from. On the show, Sister Wives, they often profile other polygamists who sometimes talk about their bad experiences with polygamy and the abuse that they've suffered. Then they like to contrast that with Cody and his kids and, and his wives saying how awesome polygamy is and how it's not polygamy that's the problem, it's the abusers. Sometimes that's a Venn diagram, Cody. You have to be a very strong person to do it. I think you have to be a very dumb person to do it, honestly. And I understand that they don't believe we're real, they, that they think we're fake and naive. We've invited them to come to Vegas to see the family and meet the family for a couple of days. Um, my father gave us all a hug, told us goodbye, and drove out of the yard. I didn't know that men could be bastards. I didn't know. Because, yes, there are lots of abuses, but there are normal people that love each other. So it's, you know, 
It's not up to me to to tell you what's right or wrong. I just wanted to let you know that there is bad shit going on and there's a reason why people don't like it, Cody. It's not because they don't like you, which they don't, but you get the point. There's also like a split religiously in the family. We know that Christine has left the faith. Um, if I had to guess, I would say she's probably still a Christian or at the very least spiritual. She seems like the type that really enjoys her religion and 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 it really benefits her and gives her a good outlook on life. I prayed a lot when I was deciding what to do with Cody and wondering why I needed to live plural marriage and why I felt like I had a test. Like I knew for sure that God wanted me to live plural marriage when I was younger. I knew, man, it was my path and I was supposed to and God and I were a team and I was gonna do plural marriage, right? When I just prayed more and looked at my life more and had more conversations with God about the fact that I was just freaking miserable, I just realized he's probably a God like I am a parent. I don't want my kids to be sad and unhappy and he doesn't want me to be sad and unhappy either. Janelle, in my opinion, seems to be on the fence. And part of me thinks, okay, my religion requires that you continue to make a marriage work. And I deeply believe in my faith. And I have been so much at peace that I don't know how to reconcile that. So that's where my debate with myself is all the time. Because I I know I'm happy. I don't want him to come back. Mm -hmm. But my faith requires that we are married eternally. And then Cody, I just can't get a read on him because, like, we kind of watch him lose his religion a little bit more and more every season um and now he doesn't even have the main tenet of his beliefs uh he's just got one wife now um so i don't know uh, he believed it so strongly for the longest time so i don't know you know yes it is something i'm used to doing i used to be a minister i am the high priest of my own family so when we moved to vegas from utah we were kind of forced to start doing church services in our home we were talking about how we have been apart and not being in the same homes. And the moms and I have talked a lot about how we've struggled to maintain our family culture. We know Robin is 100% still a polygamist Mormon. She feels very strongly about it. The reason I even bring up the religion aspect to it is because in this latest season, Robin just really couldn't seem to wrap her head around the fact that Christine wouldn't follow rules of a religion that she's not a part of. But if she's only spiritually married to him, can't one person opt out of the relationship because it's a spiritual covenant, it's not no, a... According to our beliefs, no. Because I feel like we built these marriages with our beliefs in our heads and in our hearts. So to break them, it has to be the same system. But that's me. So even though Christine wants to escape Cody on Earth, in heaven they're gonna still be together? No, because if she's going to go have, you know, her plan is to go find her soulmate. Yeah. So that would break that bond. Okay, so if she is with another man and has sex with another man, then all ties to Cody are completely That's my understanding. Dying. That's my understanding, yes. According to our beliefs, yeah. Okay. Okay, but Christine's not a part of that religion. Why would she follow those rules? In our church, you do have to go through channels to be released, to be divorced. So you would have to go, you don't have a, a legal contract, so you don't go to the judge, but you're gonna go to religious authorities and say, look, we really wanna separate. But Christine no longer believes in that. But Cody does still. Yeah, and so, but a, a contract is between two people. Cody married Mary in 1990, and get this, Janelle was actually married to Mary's brother at this time, and then she divorced him and then married Cody. It just really seems like there's like five polygamists and they all know each other and they're all married. And according to the sister wives lore, Mary and Janelle never got along and their relationship does not seem to be good to this day. She's just really confrontational. She doesn't mind a confrontational conversation. For her, it's not a confrontation. I feel like I need some examples. Um, the kitchen was an issue when we all shared the same kitchen. You know, what time we cooked, what we cooked, if we didn't clean up well enough, oh my gosh. Um, it just everything had to be perfect. It was just very, very stressful. It was very stressful. And this was Mary, right? Who wanted everything kind of that way. It, yes, it's just yes. That was the biggest thing is I never knew if she was mad or not mad. And the stress was so much. It was just took me over the edge and I'm like, I'm done with you. Mm. I'm done. According to several of the adult children, Mary has gotten physically violent with a couple of the kids. So... <sighs> I don't know what to tell you, Mary. Maybe don't let the sliding door hit you on the ass on the way out. 
I'm not having a sliding door, Cody. I have said that from the beginning. Cody married Janelle in 1993. She also has admitted to living separately from the family before, um, which, you know, is perfectly reasonable. Who would want to live with Cody? I got too excited uh, during this episode and forgot to mention when Cody married Christine in 1994. They all lived in a small trailer together. It was very cramped and tensions were high. Eventually, the Browns moved into a multifamily, like, apartment-style home, um, and that is the place that they lived in when the show started, and it aired in September of 2010. I'll bring up that specific date because Cody actually married Robin May of 2010, and on the show, he had just started courting her. Um, I like three wives a lot, and I'm, I'm kind of more hesitant in adding another wife. I, I like it easy. And so I kind of like just having three. Robin and I have been courting for a couple of months. <laughs> See you, kids! It's been challenging because she's about four hours away. Biggest challenge of the distance is actually the fact that my wives don't like me being away. I like my time with Cody, and having sister wives makes it so that I do have less time with Cody. Jealousy is something that I want to overcome. Cody's my soulmate. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> How's it going? Audiences were mesmerized, amused, and extremely curious about the dynamic of this family, how they handled their finances, how they raised all these kids, how they felt about jealousy and close quarters and, you know, their religion and secrecy and the personalities of the wives and all kinds of um, interesting things about this family. <laughs> So Cody married Robin in May of 2010 and she came in like a wrecking ball, just break dancing all over everybody's hearts. Robin is Cody's fourth wife, and if you ask anyone except Cody and Robin, um, she is 100% the favorite. Is Robin the favorite wife? You know, that's the most unfair question, because you don't have any idea what work she has done, what she has done as a person, the sacrifices that she's made, the games that she hasn't played. It's not about a favorite. It's about finding favor. Robin is Cody's fourth wife. She is 10 years younger than him and she was previously married to a man named David Jessup. And yes, that is also a prominent polygamist family name. So keep an eye on that one. Robin joined the family with three kids and a shitload of debt but we'll talk about that in a minute. Cody ended up adopting those kids as his own. He had to divorce Mary who was the only wife that he was legally married to so that he could marry Robin in 2014. God, it really was a hell of a time to be a Sister Wives fan at that point. I gotta talk about this picture. Can't remember who, it was probably Robin, uh, <laughs> had commissioned this drawing of Cody with Robin's kids as babies because he wasn't there when they were babies. Yeah, so we got the weird thumbs up going on but did you know that this picture is actually reconfiguring of a picture of Christine's kids? How fucked up is this? It just totally like proves, it just proves that Robin's the favorite wife and that he hates Christine. I got a picture of the kids and I got a picture of you. That is amazing. And I created a moment <laughs> that didn't exist but does now. Thank you. That is... I'm speechless. That is really neat. I also think it's really weird looking back at this photo because Gwendolyn told a story on her Patreon about when she was little making a comment that Solomon was going to be her first full sibling from Robin and Cody. She got super pissed and slammed on the brakes and yelled at Gwendolyn. I just wanted to let you know that she's always been weird about her kids joining the family. And I think that might could be contributing to why she's so upset and can't let go of Christine leaving. I didn't start filming until like 4.30 because we were out of the house all day because the city shut the power off. And not only am I sleepy, 
but the sun is setting. I'm trying to power through here. So they have a lot of debt. They make a lot of bad decisions. They have like 30 mortgages. A lot of polygamists live like this. It is really hard to make ends meet, especially when you have dozens of children and um, several wives and a lot of them live in the same house and, and a lot of them live, you know, in secret. And it's really hard to make ends meet, period. Like just in life right now, double, triple, quadruple that times as many wives as you have. Throughout the show, the adults have had all kinds of jobs, except for Robin, including Janelle getting her realtor license, Mary opening a bed and breakfast, Cody working on billboards, like advertisement billboards, and My Sister Wife's Closet, which is a jewelry and accessory company that Robin made with the help of the other sister wives um and they made really ugly designs i even remember there was an episode of sister wives where it was christmas and robin got all the wives pieces of jewelry from her collection mckelty said recently on a patreon video that when they were little they were so poor that they would go to their grandpa's ranch and he had a bakery and they would eat the day old bread as um, a meal. They try to make it look like it's an attainable lifestyle, but that, that sucks that those kids had to eat stale bread because their dad had to get his pencil wet. Because if one of my little children were to die because somebody had to get his pencil wet, that made me so mad. So the family at least appeared to be happy and thriving on the first episode of Sister Wives. Um, and then Robin showed up and I am not saying that she is the reason the family fell apart. I truly believe that this family was doomed from the start because even if all four wives were truly on board with this arrangement and say not pressured by their culture to conform to the lifestyle, Cody is a bad person and an even worse husband. So these marriages were never truly going to work out. Robin was just a harbinger, I guess. And it's certainly not her fault. And Cody clearly loves her. But this arrangement cannot continue to exist as it did for 30 years. Robin may have been the catalyst for the implosion of the marriages, but it's not her fault that if it wasn't her, it would have been somebody else. So not only did Cody start courting Robin some 10 years after his last wedding to Christine, but because of fear of prosecution in Utah, he uprooted the entire family with less than a week's notice and moved them all to Las Vegas of all places. The kids were of course devastated. They would be losing their school, their friends, their church, and it's very destabilizing. And allegedly this is because they went public on the TV show, a show that none of the kids probably even wanted to be on. We did not know how <clears throat> aggressive the district attorney would be, so we didn't want him finding out that we were leaving the state. Because of the circumstances, we're gonna move in three days. <gasps> we're loading up this weekend. We told them on Friday and we moved on Monday. Yeah. And they weren't able to go back to school. They weren't able to say goodbye to their friends. We had no homes, no job. The kids weren't enrolled in school. I'm mad, I like this home. Listen, buddy, I get it. Now, to be fair, there is a intergenerational culture of fear of the government and the police in polygamist families. It would be Cody's parents or grandparents' generation that went through this, but there were raids on polygamist Mormons in the 50s, and they would arrest the husbands and separate the families, and it's not for nothing that they were terrified of this prosecution. And at the time, Utah was trying to crack down on polygamy, um, and they were using the Browns as a scapegoat. Eventually, they decriminalized polygamy in Utah, and so the Browns could have moved back at any time. Maybe it was because of you know the principle of the thing well that's a pun because of the principle of plural marriage anyway you know maybe cody was like fuck you tom never going back even if even if it's legal i could kind of understand that but why they moved to flagstaff makes absolutely no sense oh i was a polygamist it's all ego baby plenty of 
bad things happened before they moved. Um, Mary did get fired from her job and they had police and reporters staking out their house. That was featured on the first season. Anyway, long story short, they moved to Las Vegas in 2011 and for several years they actually lived separately and across town from each other. And this had ramifications for the family culture, as they call it, and the Browns started drifting apart. So after the family got settled in into their separate houses, they began the process of building from scratch four new McMansions on a cul-de-sac. And eventually they did move into those homes, and we will talk about that. For a while, the show was a lot of tedium and monotony talking about designing these homes. And this process brought us many memorable moments like Mary's wet bar. I wanted to have the wet bar, not for the bar part of it, for the counter space part of it, because I like to entertain. So having that wet bar was very important to me. In order to have that wet bar, I had to have the hobby room and pantry behind the kitchen. And the only way that I could have that was to have the fifth bedroom. There was a lot of drama about Mary wanting the same number of bedrooms and bathrooms um, and, you know, this huge house like the other wives when she only had one adult child who was about to move out. They're using a company that builds these homes and they can only be done a certain way, according to them. Yes, it is unfair because Mary wanted to have more children, but she doesn't. She does not require the same amount of money to feed her family as the other wives do. So she doesn't need five bedrooms. I mean, she's got the LuLaRoe business and that's like a lot of leggings, but like that could be done in like a guest bedroom. Anyway, I have a lot of opinions about sister wives. So speaking of MLMs, um, quite a few of the wives and children sell MLM products. My favorite of which is Janelle and Christine sell Plexus, which is the same pink drink that Jill Rodriguez sells. I am very much anti-MLM because they prey on poor people and they will quite literally ruin your life. And the only people who can make money on them are minor celebrities like the Browns, for instance, which gives people false hope because nobody will ever have as many people in their downline as a minor celebrity. Um, you don't have to buy an angel, a tulip, okay? Um, people who want to buy high quality items will though, okay? So, hey, Alita Givens, I'm gonna go ahead and release you from right here so you don't have to watch me and you can go over to Amazon. Okay, bye. And then also plan on buying them again in a week or two. I'm just saying. It depends on what size you wear and how big your muffin top is, Alicia. Oh. Long story short, I don't advise buying any of these products, and I think if you see one, you should run as far away from them as possible. For the Browns had their um, show and their get-rich-quick schemes, three out of the four adults were working, and Christine was the primary caretaker and stay-at-home parent. And I think it's really important that we acknowledge her hard work and the labor and the hours that she put into raising the children of this family because that is a big, hard job. How do you support everybody? <laughs> well, awesome. I actually don't. We all... Everybody all works? Pretty much. Um, well, three, three, three of us work right now. I'm looking for a job and she gets to stay home. You I'm get to mom. stay home. Yeah. Yes, you like staying home, Love right? Staying and you don't home. like staying home. I remember. Me. No, she doesn't like staying home. One of you home. likes to yeah. work. It's you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do. Uh huh. And that's the benefit of, of this is that she can go off and, and work. But then don't you get stuck with all the housework? Christine? No, I don't do it all. I mean, I have a real awesome system, and I expect the kids to do their share. I now, remember we I have, have a, 16 kids. Yeah, <laughs> I have a real set schedule, and the kids help out amazingly. They're okay. great kids. And unfortunately, she's just one person. She shouldn't have had to do all that. Even just on this season, um, we see that Aspen had to be parentified at age 10. I was overwhelmed with everything. I still had to, like, produce some sort of income, so I was working at night, and Aspen in fifth grade was tucking the kids in bed at night, 10 years old, running the house after I'd leave for work. And I asked Cody, I said, I, I need your help. And he goes, I can't do that. I'm in other houses. I'm like, we live in one house. You just can't come over and tuck my kids in bed and talk to them and put them in bed. And he said, no, I just can't. And when I saw that clip, it reminded me of this one from season one, where the same thing was happening with Logan. Uh, every day I uh, wake up about a half hour earlier than everyone else. Uh, make breakfast, 
I usually don't cook for all 12 children. Mostly I just cook for uh, my part of the family. All right, come on, you gotta eat. You got everything, Gabe? Yeah. Oh, yes. She's so spoiled. <laughs> I kind of worry about Logan. I'm always like, whenever he has a chance to go hang out with his buddies, I'm like, yes, go, because I'm worried that he's He's strung a little tight, maybe. So he just came super he responsible. Takes responsibility very seriously. Yeah. The Browns finally got to move into their McMansions in 2013. This arrangement that they had with the cul de sac and the houses right next to each other, but with the shared backyard, is my favorite arrangement they've had. And I'm pulling this out of my ass here. I think that if you're going to do polygamy, that would be the best way to do it if you can afford it. But anyway, I loved their arrangement. It gave them privacy, but also room for activities. And so the kids got to run in and out of each other's houses and the family could be close. They also got their own autonomy. In 2018, TLC documented the family's hastily made decision to move to Flagstaff, Arizona, of all places. And while that was terrible for the family, it made for great television. And at this point in time, we can kind of figure out that the reason that they probably moved to Flagstaff was so that Robin could be near her oldest son, Dayton, who was going to college there. And while that is sweet of her to want to follow her baby, it is completely unnecessary that the entire family had to also move. Knowing just how overbearing Robin is, I have a feeling that maybe Dayton was trying to gain some independence and move away from his mom. So RIP, dude. I hope you get to move away from her soon. <laughs> but one thing is for certain here. The family culture was deteriorating fast under the stress of living separately, not to mention the financial issues. There was also a plot line for several seasons where Cody was trying to get the wives on board with designing and building a giant house where everybody would live together. So the entrance, my kitchen, my living room, Robin's kitchen, Ma uh, Janelle's kitchen, Christine's kitchen, Mary's kitchen, okay? Each mom specifically needs her own privacy, completely. In the house in Lehigh, Utah, Mary and Christine lived upstairs, downstairs from each other. And that's really hard because we all have different schedules. And you hear people walking around at 5 a.m. or 10 p.m. or whatever is not your schedule. I mean, I'm in bed at, at 9, but I'm up at 4 or 5, you know, and, and Robin isn't in bed till 1, but she doesn't get up until late in the morning. And so the walls between each section will be block. The house will end up being a block house with an interior wall that's block, literally separating each mom's quarters. We have lived so many different ways. And what we had, the cul-de-sac that we had in Vegas, was perfect. I want to explore it, and all I'm asking for is for you guys to have an open mind and a prayerful disposition about it. Think about it. Living with roommates is hard enough. Now imagine that you have to cook and clean and get along with somebody who is sleeping with your husband. How did you guys butt heads? Was it over raising children? Was it over the basic how to run the household? Everything. I mean, like, it I just, everything. I just kind of want to know, no, like, it was everything. Was it? <laughs> yeah, it was everything. Like, I remember, and, yeah, it was like, it was like which laundry or which detergent should yeah, we use? Yeah. Should you put oranges in the fridge or not? There was everything. Like, it was like everything. The house was never built and Robin is currently the only wife, so there is no reason for any of the sister wives to hang out with Cody or spend money on this godforsaken property that is just sitting there unused. The Browns bought a patch of land in the mountains of Flagstaff called Coyote Pass. And this land is not paid off, which, according to them, means that they can't build anything or live there yet. At least one wife was being a good sport in this situation. Janelle bought an RV so that she could camp out on the property so that at least somebody was getting use out of this expensive piece of land. God. For somebody who is only scared of poverty, Cody sure does make boneheaded financial decisions. No, 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 no. I'm not a coward. Nothing scares me but poverty. Nothing. And while the other wives were trying their best to hype Janelle up and say how awesome this RV was, Cody was being an ass once again and saying that they were lying and teasing Janelle. Now the new house! I know, it's, it's big, right? Janelle, that's, it's really big. That's the only way I knew I could do this thing. One thing I will say about Christine, no matter what she thinks, she's going to always try to make you feel better about whatever's going on. Janelle, you do have storage right there. <laughs> yeah. You can, you can put shoes in there or soup. 
Yeah. <laughs> or maybe like containers for cooking, pots and pans. Yeah, maybe. The, the silly part of this is that Janelle is trying to sell everybody how cool this is, because she thinks it's cool. Well, Christine and Mary don't think it's cool at all. They think it's stupid. And so they are teasing Janelle. Oh, this is awesome. I would never, ever live in this, but it's awesome for you. You want to know what the most frustrating thing about RV gate is, in my opinion? Well, Mr. Manosphere over here couldn't even handle some cute little doggies sharing his bed. Dogs in my bed are a hot button. Dogs in my bedroom are a hot button. Okay. Yeah, dude, I'm sorry. Like you're here one day in four, maybe three and uh, I'll choose the dogs. Gonna choose the dogs, gonna choose the kids, gonna choose the dogs. In hindsight, what Cody should have been afraid of was his wives seeking out attention from somebody else because he couldn't be bothered. Oh yeah, it's catfish time, baby. In March, 2015, Mary was talking to who she thought was a man named Sam, which ended up being a woman named Jackie. These two eventually met up and went to Disneyland together and took a selfie. At the time, Mary thought that that was Sam's assistant. And on one hand, I do feel bad for her because she thought that she was going to be in a loving relationship for once. But on the other hand, she did technically cheat on Cody. And to my knowledge, even he hasn't sunk that low before. There was also the very real safety threat that Mary felt during this time. Even though the catfish was just one person, they were pretending to be several and they harassed and cyberbullied Mary when she wasn't complying with their strange wishes. And Jackie, I mean, Sam, it's the catfish, wrote an ebook called Almost Married. And no, I haven't bought this and read it. And usually I'm all about that kind of shit, but it just felt wrong. It felt unethical to read this. So I don't know if it was the legal divorce or the catfishing or just the stress of life, but Cody and Mary's relationship seemingly never recovered from this. Jealous of Christine that she's leaving and I can't because I can, I can do whatever I want. My strength is sticking around and seeing if Cody would be willing to work on a relationship. So I leave that door open, but I'm not pining away for it. The irony of it all being that Mary is probably the most loyal and tenacious of Cody's wives, and he really doesn't seem like he gives a shit about her. Like, Cody and I are in this situation. We're not legally married. I want to work on the relationship, but Cody has basically said that he doesn't. Does that mean we're just not married anymore? I don't really consider myself married to Mary. I just, if she wanted to, if she wanted to move on and marry another, she wouldn't get an argument with me. He was heartbroken over Christine and Janelle leaving him, and he really was like, eh, to Mary. I mean, just look at this clip of him walking up to Janelle, and he literally didn't notice that Mary was standing there. Hi, honey. Hi. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Mary and Cody officially split up in January of this year. She was mad that the press leaked it, which they didn't even leak it. They were referring to the episode of Sister Wives where this happened, but. Even since being in Flagstaff, he has led me to believe that he was trying, you know, our first anniversary that we had here in Flagstaff. Cheers to a new beginning, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to this last anniversary. He's like, I don't even know why you called me, Mary. He's like, like, we're not married. We're not acting as married. And I said to him then, if that's where we are, don't you think that we should address that publicly? And he said, no, I don't want to address it. I don't want to address it. I don't want that to be out there publicly because I don't want that judgment. Where does that leave you? Are you still married to Cody? Or do you get to decide? Well, he's already made the decision. You just saw him say that. You just saw him say that. Would you guys ever think about reconciliation? Would you ever think about oh, reconciliation? I would. I would. I definitely would. But I don't think that he's... Interested. I guess Janelle just needed a little bit longer to make up her mind because she announced that she left Cody in November of 2021. We've been separated for several months. What? Yeah. Cody and I have separated and I'm happy, really happy. And she is still best friends with Christine and they just have such a beautiful relationship and I am so glad that they have each other. Okay, it's not... It's not goodbye. No, I'll see you in a week. See you, see you Just later. See you later. So not only is she supporting me, but she's helping me look forward to my next adventure. Yeah, I couldn't ask for a better friend ever. It's not the end. It's just the end of a chapter. So a big, big chapter, the end of the book, maybe. All of a sudden, my whole world looks different. <sighs> really makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside, doesn't it? I know what'll bring you back down to earth. Look at it! Look at it!
enough of the physical changes. I want to talk about Cody's new personality. He seems to be fully red pilled and he's been escalating his already high levels of misogyny that were flowing through his veins. And there is this thing in the manosphere where it says if you're getting divorced, you're going to get screwed, bro. I'm still dealing with a whole bunch of divorce bitterness. Yeah, I'm kind of in this Mm, sort of nasty place that all women are bad. No wonder his wives keep leaving him. You and I have been acting like we weren't a married couple for most of our marriage, Chanel. But seriously, folks, Cody's anger and immaturity has been a huge plot point this season. Man, just the knife in the kidneys over all these years. It honestly makes my skin crawl. And the sacrifices that I made to love you! Wasted! Now that Cody is a part of the Manosphere, it really is no surprise that he has some conservative values as well. We already know that he loves guns because he got one as a Christmas present, but recently Snarkers broke the internet when this clip of Cody at a gun show, I guess he either has a company or he's working for somebody else that sells guns. That's not the point. I want to talk about his fucking lips. <laughs> and while I haven't seen this confirmed on the show, I have heard from the adult kids that... Cody can be kind of transphobic. And while Cody has been previously supportive of gay rights on the show, I feel like his silence on transphobia really speaks volumes because Mary has been an outspoken ally to the queer community. I really think there's no excuse for him to be quiet about this. And if you don't know what I mean, <laughs> Mary's only child, Leon, they, them pronouns, has been getting some extremely transphobic comments and attacks about them online. It really pisses me off and it makes me not want to be a Sister Wives fan because some of the shit I've seen is embarrassing. It's disgusting. It's hateful. And I am shocked that I see this shit online. I bring this up because... I saw a video of Peyton being extremely transphobic about Leon, misgendering them and belittling them and saying that they transitioned for attention. Somebody said, oh, you need to really need to get educated by your sister, which really, really gets on my nerves when people are angry. Uh, so I, I reacted, I, I outlashed, I said, I love Mariah very much, but me and her don't get along. As lesbian forever ago and got tons of support came out on tv there's more than just this but now leon or leo whatever she doesn't talk to me anymore so i don't know um stopped getting tons of support and i know for a fact that they like attention i know for a fact because i remember because they love attention they love when the, when something is focused on them so they decided, oh, hey, I know how to make things more focused on me. So when she came out as trans, when they when they came out as trans, and now they are they, they also posted, I'm going to my brother's wedding soon. And if anybody calls me by she or her, I'm going to educate them. I am a patron of Gwendolyn and McKelty. I asked Gwendolyn if I could use footage from her patreon and she said i could i still felt bad using like a lot of them because i also rely on patreon for money and it is in my opinion unethical to play somebody's patreon footage on another website anyway i got permission to play you this clip and it's the only one i'm going to use so here is gwendolyn talking about her brother payton and what he's put her through. Okay, so I've been asked to address this a few times and I've really been avoiding it, but I can't hold off forever, so I guess I'll talk about it a bit. I've heard there's been some controversy surrounding Peyton, some things he said about the family, about his life, and about me. And I realize for a lot of people, I'm a source of information for this family, so I thought I should speak up on it. First of all, I have a lot of trauma associated with him, and I've forgiven him more times than I can count on my fingers. And I'm working through it, and I'm talking to professionals about it, but there is no path for him back into my life at all, especially since he hasn't changed at all. He is still the sexist, homophobic, transphobic, racist, violent abuser that he always has been for several years. He's the most awful person I've ever had the displeasure of knowing and I would strongly advise against taking anything he says as fact. I would advise against giving him any kind of support even if you're just watching the kind of content he puts out because it does encourage him to continue. Once I can fall asleep at night without heavy medication, I definitely want to talk more about this. I want to talk more about what I've been through, especially the situation. And I definitely have enough trauma that I could probably write a book on just a month of my life. Speaking of 
the sons of this family. Um, a major plot line of this season and the last season of Sister Wives was that Cody felt disrespected by his sons. He was trying to disown them because they wouldn't apologize to him and Robin. Um, and it was, it was just a lot of inappropriate behavior with Cody acting like a damn baby. And it's not all Jeanette, my fault. You have this is like not my fault. I, I had the You're acting like this is my fault. I would have been great to have had a backup. Cody, I was doing what I could. I was walking a line between my adult children and you and everybody else. I was following all the nice. CDC guidelines. Cody's acting like I was a COVID denier. I was not a COVID denier. I followed all the CDC rules. I wore a mask. I washed my hands. I was careful. I'm vaccinated for crying out loud. You're going to get mad about that, but you can't even remember your own son's birthday? I shouldn't have done this, but I did anyway. Um, I didn't remind him that it was my birthday because I wanted to see if he remembered. And he didn't. And so to him, it was just a phone call, you know, just asking me about COVID. How about more recently when Isabel needed her dad by her side when she had scoliosis surgery and Cody chose to go officiate his friend's wedding instead? And now I'm mad. What the hell? You think you're going to go officiate your friend's wedding and not take care of your own family? I think she protesteth too much. She is trying to excuse herself by making me some kind of villain. The holistic awkwardness radiating through this family was really put on display during this season 17 episode called The Worst Goodbye. Christine's daughter McKelty went out of her way to stage a formal goodbye party thing that nobody wanted, by the way. It was excruciatingly uncomfortable to watch. The only thing that made it bearable was Robin's five-year-old daughter breaking the silence by speaking her truth in a way that only a child can. None of us want to be here. Bye, Christine. Good luck. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Why did you, you and Dad break up? We just weren't in love anymore. You know, that happens sometimes. But we'll still hang out sometimes. We just weren't in love. Thanks. Oh, well, it doesn't always <laughs> fix everything, my love, but thank you. What a good idea. Thanks. <laughs> Arguably the best episode of any reality program is the reunion slash tell-all episode. And Sister Wives definitely does not disappoint in that department. <sighs> baby. It's okay. Mary and I can work it out, maybe. Uh, wow, if that wasn't bad, how about this clip of Robin being fat phobic for absolutely no reason? How is he supposed to feel appreciated? When I came into this family, I knew and I saw that when there's stretch marks and there's weight gain and there's like stagnant, you know, you're being stagnant in the marriage or there's fights or there's money problems or whatever it is. He still had this romance going with each of them. I'm sure you're all curious at this point. What's next for the ex-sister wives and their kids, huh? Well, for one, Janelle and Christine are confirmed to be getting their own spinoff soon, which, which I am definitely going to watch. Christine's got a new boyfriend. She soft launched him or hard launched. I don't know the difference. Him on Valentine's Day. Several of the kids are married. Um, Maddie has two kids and just had a new baby. Um, so did McKelty. Uh, she had a daughter and then she just had twins. Leon and their partner are engaged. Gwendolyn just got engaged. She said that, uh, they're going to live abroad for a year after they get married, which is very exciting. Lots of good stuff in the Sister Wives universe coming up. It's not just divorce and donkey circling. There's a term they use for Robin. It's called circling the donkey. In conclusion, it has been over a decade since the premiere of this show. And I, for one, have been loving every minute of it. It's such a fascinating piece of television. You learn about religion, alternative families, interpersonal drama, and it really makes you think about life. I know I have spent many hours bonding with friends over this show. And at this juncture of my life, it actually pays my bills. So... Thanks, Cody. Besides all that, I am deeply troubled by Cody's anger issues and his dive into the manosphere. I really worry about Robin's fragile psyche now that she has to spend 24 hours a day with this man. I have a lot of feelings about this show and I can't neatly fit them into a conclusion paragraph, especially now that I'm so fucking tired and the sun is setting. There will definitely be more episodes on my channel about this show, so I will keep you up to date. 
I highly, highly recommend you go watch my other videos about Sister Wives. It has a lot of clips of back seasons of the show, a lot more details and context and little stories and things. I guess I will end this conclusion by saying I am incredibly proud of Christine, Janelle, and Mary for taking back their autonomy, living their truth, and seeking out true love for maybe the first time ever. It's really hard to leave a marriage like this, especially when you have peer pressure, a jackass husband, and oh yeah, religious guilt looming all over you. Polygamy is not for the faint of heart, and these women did their best for 30 years. It's not their fault that the system was rigged against them and Cody found the bad part of Reddit. These women are taking back the narrative, and I'm so happy that they still have each other. Well, except for Mary, but she can always talk to her downline if she gets lonely. That's all I have for you today. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. I sure did enjoy making it, although I am very sleepy. Um, thank you for sticking around, um, being kind to me. I will say I did a lot of complaining about Sister Wives fans, but only the transphobic ones. Most of you, if you're a Jenna Knight and a Sister Wife fan, you're probably awesome. So I recently got a cameo from Christine and you can watch that on my Patreon because I didn't end up using it for the episode. And, um, Remember to consensually smash that like and subscribe button. Follow me on social media. Uh, join me on Patreon or membership or don't. Buy the merch. Listen to the podcast. Read the articles. Uh, drink water. Um, oh, yeah. And I have been keeping up with toxic tea. And the only thing I have to say is you people have got to stop believing everything you see online. Because we already know what happened with Mary. Okay. People really do go on the internet and tell lies. I'm not a psychologist. I'm just a parent. I feel as nervous as a three-legged cat on a hot tin roof. She's leaking emotionally. I don't think that I'm that big an ogre. Plural marriage isn't all beer and Skittles. Because if one of my little children were to die because somebody had to get his pencil wet, there's a term they use for Robin. It's called circling the donkey. They, what? You look like the bird that ate the, ate the mouse. What a goat rodeo, right? Man, just the knife in the kidneys over all these years. That's a gaslighting fallacy. That's Janelle just trying to put hot coals on my head. So we're not sitting here in our house like a bunch of alcoholics that had a fight last night and forgot it happened. A sweet 16 birthday party is a birthday party where the girl hasn't been kissed. And she's getting out of the... Uh, the lobster bucket. Carpet.